In this video, we'll cover the basics of Big O, which is one of the most important concepts to know as a software engineer, especially if you're interviewing. First, an analogy. Let's say you have a file you want to send to your friend who lives 60 miles away. For small files, it'll take less than a minute to send electronically. But for big files, say over one terabyte, it could take days. It would actually be faster to get in your car, drive over there, and deliver it physically. So that brings us to time complexity. In our example, electronic transfer is big O of S, where S is the size of the file. If the file size gets really large, then it's going to take more time to transfer. On the other hand, the drive transfer is big O of 1, aka constant time. It doesn't matter how big the file gets, it's always going to take the same amount of time to drive over there. And here we have a big O complexity chart that shows a bunch of different complexities. There are more than this. But here are some examples, and you can see that O log n and O of 1 are good. O of n scales linearly with the input. O of n log n scales a bit faster. n squared is even faster. 2 to the n and n factorial are just horrible. So big O notation classifies algorithms on how their runtime or space complexity grows based on input. And we'll get into space complexity in a second. We have the best case, the worst case, and the expected case. Let's say we're given an array, and we want to find the index of a number in the array. Here's a sample array, just a list of numbers. In the best case, they ask to find 8, which is the first element in the array. This is only one operation, so this would be big O of 1. In the worst case, it's the last element in the array. This is n operations, or big O of n, where n is the length of the array. And the expected case is somewhere in the middle of the array, because most numbers would be somewhere in the middle. This is n divided by 2 operations, or big O of n divided by 2, which simplifies down to big O of n, where n is the length of the array. We'll cover how we can simplify from big O of n divided by 2 to big O of n in just a second. Usually, we need to describe both the worst and expected cases. This is because it's helpful to know in the worst case how bad the algorithm could be. The best case, on the other hand, is not useful as it's not very common. Space complexity. Big O can also measure the amount of memory or space required by an algorithm. Example, given an array of length n as input, if our algorithm creates another array of length n, the space complexity is big O of n. If the algorithm creates n arrays of length n, the space complexity would be big O of n times n, or big O of n squared. Now let's talk about simplification. Big O just describes the rate of increase. It's actually possible for big O of n code to run faster than big O of 1 code. Say big O of 1 is a 1 hour drive, big O of n is a 10 minute electronic transfer. Therefore, we can just drop the constants, because all we care about is how the algorithm scales based on the input. So we can go from big O of 2n to big O of n. Also, non-dominant terms don't matter. If you have an algorithm that's big O of n squared plus n, this actually just scales at a rate of n squared. So you can say big O of n squared. However, big O of a plus b squared cannot be simplified without knowledge of a or b, and this is because you don't know if A or B is the one that makes the algorithm scale worse. Now, academia defines big O slightly differently, and to be precise, it's important to know. So big O in academia is the upper bound on time, and we'll get to that in a second. Big omega is the lower bound on time, and big theta is both big O and big omega combined. So for example, if you're printing all values in an array, big O could be big O of n, big O of n squared, big O of n cubed, etc. Big omega could be big omega of n, big omega log n, big omega 1, and big theta is just the intersection, big theta of n. Because it's not really useful to know the upper bound on time, because someone could say, oh, well, this printing algorithm is big O of n cubed, industry has merged big theta and big O. So this case would actually be big O of n. And there you have it. That's big O. If you found this video helpful, give a like and a subscribe, because it helps the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you next time.